Your feet are home to around 7,000 nerve endings. They have to be this sensitive to keep you balanced and not flip over. All those nerves constantly send information to your brain. It uses more power to process it than on the data from your entire torso. So, when anything happens, like extra pressure, change of temperature, or stepping on something sharp like Legos happens to your feet, it really hurts a lot. Lego bricks are made of three plastic polymer components. It makes them super resistant and strong. It would take a big horse or a piano to compress a Lego. When you step on it with all your weight focused in one point on a solid surface, all of its super strength strikes back at you. It gets right into that huge bundle of nerves, making things even worse. Things are slightly better on a soft rug, but that doesn't solve the problem. Lego felt so guilty for all the pain it causes, they even created anti-Lego slippers. The slippers with an open back fit both right and left feet. They have so much padding on the insoles, you could step on a huge brick and feel nothing. The slippers were a limited edition of 1,500 units. Random Lego fans received them as a gift from the company. Stubbing your toe hurts so much because you're exposing its tiny surface to the force of a karate punch. It's packed with nerve endings that aren't protected by much fat padding. The pain signal instantly fires into your brain. This used to save people long before antibiotics were invented. People were more careful about where they stepped to avoid all that pain. This saved them from lots of trouble. We, um, I mean, human beings, have been evolving for 6 million years, but we're still not perfect. Turns out that our bodies have a bunch of design flaws. First of all, human eyes have tiny blind spots, never mind the philosophical ones. Such a spot is about the size of a pinhead. It's located at the point where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina at the back of the eye. Your optic nerves connect your eyes to the brain. They carry images for your brain to process. This is how you see. In the spot where these nerves leave your eye, though, there's a lack of something called photoreceptors. These receptors detect light and are the reason you can see. Without them, your eyes wouldn't be able to send any signals to your brain to describe what you're looking at. But because there are no photoreceptors there, you've got a tiny blind spot in each of your eyes. If people were designed perfectly without this flaw, they'd have eyes just like octopuses. It may sound weird, but the eyes of these creatures are eerily similar to humans. But their optic nerves run behind the retina. This means that the nerves don't have to leave the eye at any point. So there's no gap that causes the blind spot in human eyes. What else? Around 65 million Americans complained about having issues with their back. And this is because of evolution. Just like dogs, humans used to walk on all fours. When people were walking on their hands and knees, the curve of their spine was pretty much perfect, and all their organs felt comfortable. Because of this, there was never any pressure on their backs. Well, we evolved to start walking on two legs to save energy. The search for food took longer and longer. And when walking on two legs, people save 25% of energy. But this was bad news for people's backs. Because this way, their spines were basically forced to turn into a column to support all the weight and make space for other organs. But if your spine was completely straight, you wouldn't be able to walk on two legs. So it evolved to become curved. But this puts a big amount of pressure on your lower back. So basically, to get rid of our pesky back problems, you should start walking on all fours again. Most people have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means 24 ribs in total. But some have 25. One in 200 people is born with the so-called cervical rib. It forms right above the first rib and grows at the base of a person's neck above the collarbone. A cervical rib can be located on the left, right, or both sides. You can have it without even knowing about it. This extra rib doesn't necessarily form completely. It can be just a thin strand of tissue fibers not even an x-ray can see. In most cases, it's really not a big deal, unless it starts putting pressure on nerves and blood vessels. You probably don't think that much when you're filling out a form and come across the eye color section. But it's not that simple for people who have this rare body feature called heterochromia. That's when a person has a difference in eye color. Complete heterochromia means you have two different colored eyes, like one blue and one brown eye. But there's also partial heterochromia. It means only a part of your iris is a different color from the rest. 
In the U.S., fewer than 200,000 people have it. Natural red hair is not as common as you might think. Only 2% of the world's population has it. There are eight genes responsible for it. Scientists used to link it with just one rare and recessive gene, MC1R, that you had to inherit in two versions from both of your parents. Then, they realized not every person with two red-haired versions got red hair. So, there have to be some other genes involved. Researchers are still not 100% sure why some people are more ticklish than others. Some think it might be genetic or has to do with how sensitive your skin is. You're normally most ticklish in the most vulnerable places, like the abdomen or throat. It could be a natural reflex to push away the intruder. Most people become less ticklish as they get older and when they're sad or angry. You see someone yawn and yawn back at them for the same reasons you imitate the words and actions of others. It's a primitive, unbeatable reflex of people and some animals, like chimpanzees and dogs. Research has shown contagious yawning is also a sign of empathy and bonding. The more you try to stop yourself from yawning, the more you want to yawn. You feel so good after a sneeze, because it's a massive tension release. When that happens, your body releases the so-called feel-good chemical endorphin. A lot of things, from plucking your eyebrows to working out and staying in the bright sun can make you sneeze. You can't sneeze in your sleep because your sneezing nerves are also sleeping. Sneezing is important to your body because it clears the nose of bacteria and irritating stuff and also keeps the mucus level in balance. Sometimes one sneeze isn't enough to do all that or it would have to be too powerful for you to handle. That's why sometimes you sneeze a few times, one after another, to make sure it worked. You inherited goosebumps from your animal ancestors. Their hairs stand up when they're cold or scared. As the hair coat rises, it becomes thicker and keeps them warm or makes them look bigger. You have way less hair than animals, so this feature is mostly useless. Still, you get goosebumps in the same situations, plus when you're emotional. The tiny muscles under your skin contract, making the hair stand up and the areas around them protrude. Make no bones about it, people have too many bones in their feet. We have all these bones because our ape-like ancestors needed them to grab onto tree branches. Now people aren't swinging from trees anymore, but we still have all those bones, which makes us prone to damaging them. And this can be extremely uncomfortable. Think about how many times you've stubbed your toes. If we were designed perfectly, our feet would look like those of an ostrich. These birds have way fewer bones, and the parts that look like knees turned backwards are actually their ankle joints. This makes ostriches less prone to injuries and also helps them run fast. Wow, if people were designed this way, it would make the Olympics way more interesting. I'd sure watch. Now, chew on this one. Human teeth are also far from perfect. People spend so much money on preserving them. At the same time, no other animal has to visit a dentist as we do. Also, once our teeth are permanently damaged or fall out, we can't grow new ones. Sharks are the opposite. They have an endless supply of teeth. In some shark species, a new set of teeth develops every two weeks. Kangaroos also have way better teeth than people do. If we were designed perfectly, we'd probably have the same teeth as our bouncing buddies. Once their teeth wear down, they fall out and their rear teeth migrate forward. That's not the only issue we have with our teeth. Our mouths are way too crowded. Hey, I normally have a foot in mine. In the process of evolution, the human brain grew dramatically, and our jaws had to become wider and shorter to make room for it. But this left almost no room for our wisdom teeth. In the past, wisdom teeth were helpful when people needed to break down food, But as we learned to cook and process food, these teeth weren't needed anymore. So, in short, people should just get rid of them completely. And this may actually be happening. Around 25% of people, mostly Eskimos, are now born without some or all of their four wisdom teeth. Now, it happens that our knees are quite impractical too. It's the most complex joint in the body. It's sandwiched between two massive levers, which is already pretty risky. The knee only moves forward or backward, which doesn't make it a very secure construction. That's why there's a bunch of rules in many kinds of sports, like soccer or rugby, that forbid hitting an opponent's knee from the side. 
To make people better suited to their new sporty lifestyle, the hinge-like mechanism of the knee could be replaced with a ball and socket. This would be like the structure you have in your shoulders and hips. Friends, Romans, countrymen, waggle your ears. Yep, like dogs and cats, some humans can waggle their ears. These lucky ones can move their ears independently thanks to special muscles called extrinsic ear muscles. But those serve literally no purpose, apart from providing a cool party trick. You know which my color is super rare? Gray. Most people have either brown, blue, or hazel eyes. About 17% of people have blue eyes, but the odds of getting those and red hair at the same time are just around 0.17%. Less than 1% have gray eyes. If you have gray eyes, it's because of a low level of melanin in the front layer of your iris. There are just 43 people in the world that have this extremely rare body feature called golden blood. About 0.6% of Americans are AB negative, but this is still not the rarest type in the world. In 1961, scientists discovered there's an indigenous Australian with a specific blood type, the type that completely lacks certain antigens, RH which means proteins or red blood cells. Those who have that exclusive type can donate to others with rare blood types, but can receive it only from one of those other 40-ish people who have it. That's why it's golden blood. It's worth its weight in gold. Another rare body feature is a small hole near the ear, pre-auricular pit. At first, it seems like some sort of a gill. Some scientists have a theory it could be some sort of evolutionary remains from times when we were aquatic creatures. This tiny hole is mostly present near one ear, not both. Some people have chimp-like feet. They're bendy, flexible, and adapted for climbing trees. Researchers at Boston University filmed 400 people walking barefoot and concluded that 1 in 13, or 8% of the participants, had this feature. Typically, the human foot is rigid. We've evolved that way so we can efficiently walk on even terrains. At least, that's something you could learn from textbooks. But other apes have flexible feet. This allows them to grasp branches as they move through the trees. The kind of foot that's similar to tree-dwelling apes is flexible at the middle. It bends at the ball of the foot and is halfway between the ball and the heel. Human feet normally have a joint at this point, but the majority of people have stiff ligaments that span the joint. That's how they keep it rigid. Those rare people with chimp-like feet have softer ligaments that allow their midfoot to bend. Try to move your middle finger or your pinky. It's hard to do without bending your ring finger, right? Well, that's how it works for most people. But there are some who can completely isolate their ring finger. Researchers believe it's hereditary. You feel super tired after a long time in the sun because it makes you lose water faster and your body temperature rises. Your body and your heart have to work harder to keep the temperature normal and deliver all the vital fluids to your organs. Staying in the sun also takes down your sleep hormone levels. When you get into a darker place, it all rises again. If you want to stay active longer after a day on the beach, keep the lights bright indoors. Cuddling, hugs, and holding hands makes you happier because they release the feel-good hormones. They lift your mood, reduce stress, and also improve your immune system. Even seeing images of other people hugging can give you this effect. Your skin gets wrinkled after 5 minutes in the water thanks to evolution. A long time ago, your ancestors needed a way to grip in both wet and dry conditions. So their skin adapted to look like a tiny river drainage system. Little streams on your skin unite into large channels that flow into a central river, driving water away from your fingers and toes after long contact with water. You feel the instinct to stretch your arms over your head first thing in the morning to wake up your muscles. They lose tone overnight, and there's fluid moving along your back. When you stretch, the fluid goes back to where it belongs. It also helps your heart get back to its normal work mode after a night of pumping at slower speeds. Cats and dogs also do it for the same reasons. You fall asleep faster in a colder room because it signals to your body it's time to sleep. It also needs to lose some heat when you get in bed to conserve energy on maintaining your temperature overnight. Cooler air also helps you sleep all night without waking up and boosts your metabolism. 
You sometimes see stars when you stand up from lying down or sitting because of a sudden drop in blood pressure. This drop messes up brain function for a brief moment. It can cause stars, flashing lights, bands of light, sparks, or colorful rings. You can also see them after you rubbed your eyes or sneezed. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.